Blendif is one of the most powerful tools in Photoshop, and I get a lot of questions about it. So in this video, we'll take a look at at least five great ways you can use this amazing tool to improve your photos, as well as a closer look at what Blendif really does. For this first example, let's add some glow to the highlights of this sunrise. And we'll do that by creating a new brightness contrast layer, which we don't need to adjust. We're simply going to switch the blend mode over to soft light. And the soft light blend mode is going to do all the heavy lifting here. You can see from before to after, we get a really nice glow in the highlights. However, the shadows got significantly damaged. And so what we want to do is reveal just the highlight areas of this adjustment layer. And anytime you're thinking about targeting by highlights, midtones, or shadows, you should be thinking about either a luminosity mask or blend if. And we're going to use blend if in this case. To do that, we'll just double click to the right of the layer name. And we're going to go to the blend if area, which I'll explain in more depth in a moment. But let's just quickly knock out the dark stuff, split our slider and just look at what that does for an image. From before to after, we get all the beautiful stuff in the sun here without the damage in all the shadow areas. So it's a nice and targeted adjustment simply by adding a blend if to it. Now, I find when I teach blend if to other photographers, what seems to confuse most people is you just simply cannot see this. It's very hard to understand what exactly Photoshop is doing because this is creating a hidden layer mask, but you cannot see it. And then the result is this blended thing, which oftentimes can be pretty subtle. So it's just really hard to understand. So before we get to all these other great examples I've got lined up here, let's start with a more contrived example and just see how exactly Blendif works. So what I've got here is a gradient going from pure black to white. So we can see a full range of tones that Blendif is working on with this underlying layer. And then on top of it, we've got this yellow layer. So instead of a real adjustment, we're just going to paint yellow anywhere that the blend if is affecting the image. So let's go create our blend if by clicking on the right here, double clicking, which gives us the layer style dialog and the blend if is down below. Now blend if has three parts. The top here is for more advanced targeting by color. And I've got a separate video on that. If you want to go deep on that, so we're not going to cover that here. Then there's this layer, which I personally never use. And I find that 99% of the time is not something other photographers use. It's the underlying layer, this is the one that most people are going to use and is really the power of this tool. If you're familiar with range masks in Lightroom or Adobe Camera Raw, this works conceptually in the same way with the enormous benefit that you can use it on anything in Photoshop. So much greater use here than for range masks within Adobe Camera Raw because you can use it on anything. Now, the way that this works, it's saying, blend, that is the target layer, our yellow layer, if these conditions are met, that this, the values in the underlying layer or layers, everything beneath it, are somewhere between 0 and 255, or pure black and pure white. And of course, every pixel is somewhere between black and white. So every pixel here is visible because it's really not excluding anything. But what if we start to bring up the black limit here? As we do that, we're excluding things beneath a certain range. So everything between zero or pure black and 117 gray here, that's all excluded. And we just blend between 117 and 255. And that's the range you see here on this gradient or in the image, the equivalent gray value for all these colors here. You can see that this area is outlining the similar limits and this little highlights throughout the image. So obviously an image gets a little more complex than this gradient. And that's why I've got the gradient showing here, but that's how we target highlights is we just exclude the shadows and leave behind highlights. What if you want to go target the shadows? Well, we go do the opposite. We just simply bring in the whites and then what's left behind are the shadows. We only show the things between the sliders and all the highlights and midtones have been excluded here. And if we wanted to do the midtones, we'd kind of do both sliders. We bring in the whites a little bit, we bring in the blacks and then what's left behind here, these midtones are the midtones that are visible. Now you notice that the result here, aside from the fact we're using this weird yellow adjustment, not a real adjustment, is everything's going from not blended to fully blended. You can see it just immediately transitions from one to the other. There's no softness or feathering to get from one to the other, and that's going to make for a very harsh edit. We want to smooth that out. And the way we do that is by splitting our sliders. If we hold on the Alt or Option key and then click and drag, that slider moves in two different parts. And so we've softened up this transition on the dark side. So we go from not blended to starting to blend gradually to fully blended and then not blended again. And that's the same thing here. It's not blended, transitioning, fully blended, and then not. Or we could split the white slider. If I alt or option click, we can soften up the highlight end of things as well. 
And that's what this is doing. Now, underneath all of this in the background is essentially a luminosity or layer mask that Photoshop is using to apply this. You just can't see it, but Lumenzio can help create it for us for learning purposes. So let's just click OK and let's convert from this blend if to the identical luminosity mask. I'm going to hold down command or control and click on mask in the panel. And we've converted from that blend if to this layer mask. And if we just go before and after, you notice that the image looks exactly the same because this blend if and this layer mask, they are exactly the same thing. They do exactly the same thing to the image. And so you might wonder, well, why would you use one or the other? A luminosity mask, if I alter option click, you can see this here. A luminosity mask can be infinitely refined. I can paint on this, I can adjust it, I can do all sorts of cool things to it. So you can do more advanced things with a luminosity mask. However, a blend if has some of its own advantages. One is that it's dynamic. Things like this gradient here that got baked into the mask at the time I created it, a blend if would automatically adjust. Even if I went and hid this spectrum underneath, the blend if would ignore this now because it's hidden, whereas the layer mask it's just built into the layer mask. It doesn't automatically remove that from the layer mask. So if I was in my image doing things like cloning to remove dust spots, a blend if would automatically update, whereas the layer mask might need some additional work itself. Another major advantage is if we look at the file size here with the layer mask, it's showing an estimated 17 megs, whereas with the blend if it's showing 14. So a layer mask is making our file bigger, whereas a blend if is not. So those are some pretty big advantages to using a blend if. Let's go clear this out. And I'm just going to quickly show you how we do this in Lumenzia because moving all these sliders can be a little tedious and even a bit hard to repeat. Lumenzia can do all this for us. When you open up the panel, normally it looks like this. It's in this regular preview mode. And you can shift click on any of these previews to do an equivalent blend if. Like if I shift click on L, I get a lights blend if. And you can see here it's split the sliders and all the stuff I want. I can even refine it with the slider in Lumenzia to be more restrictive to just the brightest stuff or more generous across the range. I can go grab the darks, be more specific to the really dark stuff. So I can very quickly dial in the exact blend if I want with a couple of uh, keystrokes up here. Now, if you don't want to use the keyboard shortcuts, you can switch the panel over into the blend if mode. If I click at the preview button a couple of times here, now it says if under, and now I don't have to hold the shift key. I can just click on whatever preview I want, including mid-tones, the range slider. I can even pick right from the image and grab whatever it is I need to work with. And if I want to remove it, click X to clear that out. So that's kind of roughly how Lumenzi is going to work. And that's what we use for the rest of these demos. Let's jump over to the more interesting stuff. Let's do some real edits. And with this first one, what I want to do is dodge and burn these sand dunes to make them look more dimensional. I'm going to increase the light on the lit side of the dune and decrease it on the back. So we're going to dodge the highlights and burn the shadows. To do that, let's click on Dodge and Lumenzia. We're going to use a solid fill and let's go set it for overlay for our highlights. So we'll do Dodge Burn. We're doing the highlights, so let's go grab white. And now we've got our dodging everywhere. It's not limited to highlights, so it's affecting the shadows and we need to be more targeted. So we're going to add our blend if to it. So to target these lights, we go click on the L blend if in the panel. And so now you can see we're hitting just the highlights and the dunes and it's already looking pretty good. It's also affecting the sky, which I'll address in a moment, but let's go work on the backside of the dune and then we'll just target both of those together on the dunes. So for the shadows, let's go click on dodge again. And this time let's be a little more gentle with soft light and we'll create this by setting it to black. So we're going to use black and soft light to burn down these shadows. And of course, this is also going everywhere. So let's target the dark stuff by clicking on D in the panel. And this is kind of affecting some of the local highlights. So what's dark in an absolute sense over the overall image may be a local highlight. So we don't really want to affect this part of the dune. And that's included in the default darks 1.5 we created. So we need to adjust this a bit. And in order to visualize things, we can click on this red if button in Lumenzia which will help us visualize the blend if it shows us this green overlay. So very much like the yellow we had in the previous example, this is showing us where the blend if is taking effect and just helps pick the perfect blend if for this image without having to kind of guess as you're looking at the adjusted image. So what I want is not having green on the highlights of the dune and just on the backside. So let's go grab the slider and bring it down. Darks three is getting closer. I think darks four 
and a half ish. That's hitting the backside of these dunes. I think that looks like it's hitting the right parts of the image. So I'm going to accept that and I'm going to get rid of that visualization by just clicking on if once again. Now, if you want to use a different color on this, you can. If you shift click if, you can choose whatever you want. I could go pick something like magenta. And now when I visualize, I'll be visualizing in magenta. So you've got some flexibility, but that's just a tool to help see what you're doing in order to adjust the slider and get the perfect blend if. Now, even though I'm hitting the correct part of the dune, I think it's a little too strong. So I'm going to back it off. Let's bring the opacity way down to something like 20% here. And that's looking better. So now I've dodged the highlights, I've burned the shadows, but I'm also affecting the sky that I don't want to do. So let's target just the bottom of the image. And we can do that very easily by selecting both of these layers with a shift click. And let's click on group for a group mask. So now this mask will control everything inside of it. And we can put a layer mask that interacts with our blend if. And what I'm going to do is hit G for the gradient tool. Make sure I'm in the linear mode with a black to white. And if I just go click and drag, now I've got this white to black mask. So what it's doing is only the stuff in the bottom of the group is visible. And because both the layers are in the group, now our dodging and burning is contained just to the bottom of the image. And it's not spilling into the sky and damaging the sky. So we've got this great adjustment with just a few clicks to dodge and burn in these highlight and shadow areas. And again, totally flexible. Whatever we want to do with this image, we can make more refinements. So very nice and flexible way of using blend if for dodging and burning. Let's take a look at another example here. In this one, we're going to work on this sky color. I just want to work on the, uh, the blown highlights here. This is another use case for this. And you can see here, these highlights are paper white. I was working pretty quickly clip my highlights in a small part of the image I didn't catch until later, but it's not really a problem. I mean, it would be it would be ideal to have shot it in camera, but we can fill this in with the neighboring color in a convincing way that this is going to look better. We can improve this by just grabbing some of this adjacent color, but then only revealing it in the areas which are paper white, the brighter areas through a blend if. So let's go and create a new solid fill layer and a solid color layer. And we'll just simply hide it for a second, double click again, and we just click on the neighboring pixels. We're sampling the pixel we want to fill in these areas. So now when we turn this on, of course, the whole image is getting that color and we just need to reveal it in the brightest areas. And we can do that by clicking on L for a lights blend if. Now this is too broad and it's affecting the whole sky. So I need to refine it to the brightest areas, which we can do by bringing the slider down to something like five and a half here. Now you can see that that is filling in these areas and maybe I go even a little more restrictive. So something like lights 5.6, which is filling in these blown highlights. If we zoom in here, just take a look from before where the paper white to after it's filling that in very nicely. Not the same as shooting it perfectly the first time, but it can really save you when you've got some small areas of blown highlights by just filling in that area with a lights blend if. For the next example, I'm going to the image I used in my previous tutorial where we worked on adding the star trails to the sky. What I didn't show you is that the shadow areas of the foreground actually have a considerable amount of noise in them, and I want to reduce that noise. So what I've got here is this middle layer where I've added a camera filter to reduce noise, and you can see I get this big improvement in the quality of my image there. However, if we move around and look at the highlight areas, this noise reduction is making things look pretty terrible. Here's the original image where we don't need a lot of noise reduction. And then with the noise reduction there, it's affecting the pixels and causing a lot of problems. So what I want to do is apply this noise reduction in the shadow areas and not the highlight areas. So again, great use case for a blend if. Let's go and click on D for a dark blend if. And let's go click on the if visualization so we can see where it's going. And we just want to back it off so that the highlights are not affected and only the shadows are. So we'll go drag this down. It's getting a little better, maybe somewhere around like darks four and a half. Now the highlights are not being affected and the shadows are. I think that looks good. So I'm going to click if to turn off the visualization. And now we can see from before to after the highlights are not getting harmed. But if we move over to our shadows, the shadows are definitely getting improved. And I've got, still got some little hot pixels to clean up in a few areas, but the noise is gone. And that just really nicely improves things. So rather than having a trade off between trying to balance the damage to the highlights or removing the noise in the shadows, 
I can get the best of both by simply adding a little blend if to my noise reduction layer. And then for this next example here, I've got this image that I processed uh, actually using several different blend ifs. You can see that I did some lightning in the foreground and I isolated things by adding some blend ifs here. If I open this up a little bit more, you can kind of see my notes that they've got some targeting of the dark areas like here. This is targeting these dark areas and it's not spilling in the foreground. No matter how sloppy I was around the tree edges, you can see the magenta edge is the end of the tree. So I didn't darken the sky, for example. Or if we go to this layer here, this is meant to diminish the reds in this tree. This, this tree was so powerful. Without this on here, you can see this tree is just too red. And I wanted to tone that down, but I didn't want to take red out of the sky. So I added this not lights blend if. So everything that's not a light or meaning the darks and the midtones would get adjusted here. So my blend if here is targeting all these areas but then this is just affecting the saturation of the reds in my HSL. So I'm just getting that nice little fix on just this one part of the image. So these are just a few things I did already, but the thing I really wanna show you on this is we can add a, a vignette to this image and we can do that in Lemenzia by clicking on L for a lasso. Let's just kind of quickly lasso the main area of the image like so, and just click on vignette. And if we do so, we get a vignette that's darkening our shadows. You can see from before to after, it's really kind of pushing those shadows down quite a bit. And that's not what I want. So I'm going to undo that. And this time I'm going to create the vignette a little differently. If I hold down the shift key, it'll automatically add a blend if to improve it. It'll help preserve the shadow. So when I shift click on vignette now, now these shadow areas did not get darkened. It's just darkening the key areas without harming those shadows. And to make it a little more obvious, let's just move the opacity up to full strength on this. And you can see the shadows are quite visible, but we can clear this blend if by clicking X and Lemenzi. You can see without the blend if, just how much damage we'd be doing to the shadows. So this vignette with a blend if can really improve the results by just darkening the areas that should get dark in the corners without losing that critical shadow detail. Now click to this next video to learn more great ways you can use blend if to enhance your images.